Welcome to the Boxing Gossip channel. As always, thanks for tuning in. Uh, regular viewers will know that I've recently launched a profile on Patreon. Um, link is in the description below. Um, and I've launched a weekly gambling picks kind of update via Patreon. It's been running for about two weeks or so. The ambition is to do a weekly video uh, via Patreon for those who are interested. Now, I'm not going to change any of um, the normal content, content that goes up on the YouTube channel. Um, that will remain consistent and unchanged as we look to grow it out in 2018. Um, but with YouTube being increasingly demonetized in recent weeks, um, I'm hoping this will be a, a good way of um, expanding the channel and you know hopefully allowing me to update a few things which are the plans anyway uh, I had a few people inquire about it I've called it the gambler um, and rather than doing it um, on patreon only this week my intention was to do a version of it on YouTube so people can see the type of content that I'm referring to and have an opportunity to try before you buy if you like now Obviously, the date today at the time of recording is 21st December. It's no secret and no surprise that there aren't any big fights this weekend to discuss the gambling odds to. So what I'm going to do is rather than discuss the odds for next week's fight, because usually the format of the gambler update um, is to provide a tip of the week and provide a long shot option of the week. But what we're going to do instead for this update is to look ahead to the early odds that are available for January and February and discuss some of those markets. Uh, and yeah, I guess this will just give you guys a bit of a taste, bit of a flavor of the type of content that is gonna be available to those who sign up via Patreon and you can kind of make your own decision as to whether you want to do that or not. So, New Year, um, boxing for me gets underway in earnest 21st of January so we've actually got or well, 20th of January I should say but we've actually got a little bit of a break now we've got three or four weeks without huge boxing action I understand there's a little bit in Japan towards the end of 2017 um, but when we start talking about the big events the first big fight of 2018 is the 20th of January Errol Spence Jr. versus Lamont Peterson. Now the early odds for this Errol Spence is starting as an overwhelming favourite He's 1 to 12 on, best price. You know, a lot of bookies have him at 1 to 20 on. Some even have him at 1 to 40 on. I certainly would not want to be back in Errol Spence at those kind of odds. Look, Errol Spence is an overwhelming favourite in this fight. You know, I make him a huge, huge, huge favourite to beat Lamont Peterson, who is a smaller guy, who carries a lot less power, who seems to be a lot less fresh in his career. But having said all of that, at those prices, this fight for me is a bit of a swerve you know when we get closer to the fight <coughs> there may be some additional markets right now i'm not able to see method of victory markets i'm not able to see those kind of lines so right now it's a bit of a swerve for me this one um but maybe it's one that we will review closer to the time and certainly when it comes to doing the gambler update for uh for that fight week it's one we'll crack in a in a lot more detail for now it's a little bit of a swerve the weekend after is interesting, though. I'm referring to the 27th of January, where Alexander Usyk will take on Maris Bredis. Usyk is 2-9 to nine on against Bredis, who's a huge underdog at 5-1. to one. Um, Those odds themselves don't jump out at me. You know, that was another one that at first glance I thought was a swerve. But actually, having looked through the method of victory markets, Paddy Power actually have a bet that's very interesting to me, which is Alexander Usyk to win by decision. And that's a five to four price. So you were getting five to four, you put four pounds on, you return nine pounds on Alexander Usyk to beat Maris Bredis. Um, now I think that's a, an interesting bet. Bredis has shown great signs of durability. Um, I haven't really seen him hurt or look like he's gonna get stopped in fights previously. His promoters put him in with Manuel Char up at heavyweight. You know, that's not a common technique or a common tactic they use for cruiserweight fighters. And, you know, that suggests that he's a guy who wasn't going to get blown out of there by a slightly bigger guy. I think Usyk is going to have a real advantage in terms of skill in this fight. And I do think Usyk can quite comprehensively outpoint Maris Bredis. I think there's a chance Usyk may actually make him um, look quite basic. 
But I sometimes wonder if Usyk's KO ratio slightly flatters him due to the level of opposition he was in with earlier on in his career. And I suspect as Usyk steps up and fights the Bradises of this world, we will continue to see those knockouts become less and less of a regularity. 5-4, to four, Alexander Usyk to win uh, by points by decision, by technical decision, I, I see that as a bit of value, actually. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if by the time fight night comes, that starts at a bit of odds on. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below on that. But that's certainly a market that, that I'm looking at very, very seriously. Um, the World Boxing Super Series is, uh, you know, a major, major pot in February. And by the time February the 3rd comes along, uh, you have Murat Gassiev versus Unier Dortikos. Now... This is another one where we don't yet have method of victory markets. Dortikos uh, is an underdog in the fight. He's available as big as 7-5 to five in places, with Murat Gassiev a strong favourite. With a lot of the bookmakers, he's around a 4-6 to six mark. <coughs> what will interest me in this fight is when the method of victory comes out. For me, they're both unknown fighters. They're both big punchers. They've both got a real chance in this fight because they're so unknown, which makes me nervous about playing this one for large stakes you know if we're having a talk about having a, a bet i'd be more inclined to look at the usik bradis fight because these guys have been performing at a higher level for a longer period of time and there's more high level footage high level form available to analyze i would be interested to see the price on gassier by ko i think dortikos having what's the bit of tape of him especially the one fight in his career that went long um I temporarily forget who that was in against, but I wonder if Dorsakos is the kind of guy who will be devastating for three or four rounds and then potentially loses a bit of snap from his work. This is just a suspicion of mine. This is something that I will look into in a lot more detail before making this as an actual selection. But I'd be interested to see what Gassiev by KO is when we get closer to the fight. The pressure that Gassiev builds, the style of fighting he brings to the equation... Um, that could make things very, very difficult if you were to gas against him, um, no pun intended. And if Dortikos is vulnerable to that sort of approach late on in fights, um, then Gassiev, who is heavy-handed himself, and he does bring that sort of stalker press fight style, Gassiev by KO could be a bit of value. Uh, let's wait to see. That's one for the notebook right now, but one that we may return to closer to the fight. February the 10th, Callum Smith versus Jürgen Bremer. This fight I like from a pure value betting perspective. You guys know, long time viewers will know, I had Jurgen Bremer to win this tournament at 50 to 1, which is a bet that I've placed in advance. You know, I really thought he would have too much for Rob Brandt. I actually think Jurgen Bremer is a bit of an underrated fighter, you know. I think he's still got a lot left to offer. And he made very, very easy work of Rob Brandt. I'm amazed the bookmakers have it priced so widely. For me, Callum Smith was very, very average against Eric Scoglin. Very average indeed. And he. Lost rounds to Skoglin when Skoglin was able to get the sort of jab and the boxing going, which is exactly the kind of style that Jürgen Bremer brings to the equation. Now, I know Callum Smith is a big guy. I know he's a heavy-handed guy. But Bremer's used to mixing it up at 175, where the men are all a bit bigger and a bit stronger and probably harder hitting than the scene at 168. I wouldn't be surprised whatsoever if Jürgen Bremer causes Callum Smith real, real difficulties. And the value at 5-1 to one that you can currently get with the likes of Coral, Ladbrokes, William Hill strikes me as a really, really good bet, a value play. Look, I'm not saying Jürgen Bremer's definitely going to win this fight. I'm not saying this is one to have the mortgage on. What I am saying is if you like value betting, here you're getting 5-1 to one on what for me should be a bet. Personally, if I was priced it up, I'd have no bigger than 5-2. to two. I think the value you're getting at present is at least double what the price should be. That's the difference between the bookmaker and public perception and what I believe the reality to be. Look. Whether you you know follow what I believe the reality to be is a question for you. This is of course gambling. There is risk involved. But yeah, that's my take. That's that's certainly a market that I've already had a look at and that I will probably be looking at again. And will await with interest when those method of victory markets come out. The next week in Saturday, Sat uh, the next week in February, the final fight we're going to discuss in this video. You know, February is fairly action packed for boxing actually. George Groves versus Chris Eubank Jr. Now. Long-time viewers will know that Irish Tom and I discussed this fight on the podcast several weeks ago. Maybe it was several months ago now. And we both backed Chris Eubank Jr. to win the fight at 5-4. to four. We thought that was real value. Well, it turns out that it does appear that it was value because right now the odds have changed substantially. And now Chris Eubank Jr. has actually been backed into favourite. He's as low as 1-2 to two with some bookmakers and the majority have him at 4-6. to six. 
You can still get a bit of 8 to 11 out there, um, but I think the value has somewhat gone on Chris Eubank Jr. from a pure win perspective. Those gamblers who took the early price and wanted to bank in when 5 to 4 were available are now in a good position where they can choose to lay off their bet or you know do whatever they want with it. Maybe they just think 5 to 4 is good enough value and they want to sit on it. George Groves, you can actually now get at 5-4 to four against. He actually opened up initially as favourite. There are other markets available. There are method of victory markets that are still, you know, developing and will continue to develop. And, you know, we'll cover those in the episode of The Gambler the week beforehand. But, yeah, that's just some early thoughts on what I'm looking at for you, uh, you know, in terms of gambling opportunities for the fights in January and February. I think Usyk, by points, is a market to consider. Um, I think Bremer to beat Callum Smith is certainly a value bet angle to consider and will await with interest as the markets continue to develop for Groves, Eubank, for Gassiev, Dortikos, uh, maybe even for Spence Peterson. Um, 2018 is going to be a great year for boxing, I'm convinced. There's lots of big fights already confirmed and yeah, I for one am looking forward to seeing if there's a, a pound or two to be made uh, at the bookmaker's expense as we go through the course of the year. Let me know your thoughts on these comments. Um, let me know your take on any of these markets. Leave your comments in the section below. Um, if you would like to subscribe to The Gambler, uh, hopefully this has given you a bit of a taste of the type of content. Um, normally, as I say, it will be a much more in-depth look at specific fights for the week ahead, but this gives you some sort of example. Um, Link in the description box below to the Patreon option. And if you want to sign up to Patreon to The Gambler, um, it's relatively easy to do. But any problems at all, uh, let me know. Uh, if it's not of interest, well, I still hope you enjoyed this video. Um, as I say, the YouTube content will remain unaltered and remain uh, generally available on YouTube. So no changes there at all. Um, as always, hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the content. Please press subscribe and many, many thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it, guys.